Hello again, Internet. Astro with Roro here. Have you ever heard someone say, I don't shoot in mono. There's not enough clear nights where I live. Well, you probably have, because it's widely thought that you need a lot of extra integration time to make mono work compared to one-shot color. Today we're going to break this idea and treat monochrome imaging just like we do one-shot color, because not everyone has the luxury of endless clear nights or a full sky view. This video is focused on setups that have an electronic filter wheel and an automatic focuser. If you're not using an autofocuser, make sure you subscribe as an upcoming video will dive into automating your astrophotography rig and all of the benefits and pitfalls that can bring. To start, let's imagine that you have one clear night sky to capture the best image you can. You have a monochrome camera and three filters, red, green, and blue. In this first scenario, you spend three hours imaging red, three hours imaging green, and finish off with three hours of blue. You're also dithering between your images as you know it's really important to get rid of that pesky walking noise. Each exposure you take is two minutes long, and your dithers take around five seconds each. Over the course of the night, you will have lost 22 and a half minutes of imaging time to your dithers. Not only that, but what happens if clouds roll in for an hour while imaging your green channel? Now you only have two hours of green. These are classic pitfalls of mono imaging, and I can see why people don't enjoy that. But we can improve all of this. Instead, let's pretend like we're shooting like a one-shot color camera would. You shoot a red image, then a green image, then a blue image, then a second red, green, and blue, and so on. By imaging like this, you will never be left missing data from one channel over another. If clouds roll in for an hour, you lose one hour of imaging spread across all channels. So you'll still end up with even integration time. The benefits don't stop there though. Back in scenario one, you may also find other issues when you try to combine your channels. You see, red was imaged early on in the night green while the object was near its peak altitude, and blue as the object was setting. This means each channel has different background light gradients and transparency issues. This will make channel combination far more difficult than it needs to be, and you may end up with lingering color glow in your final image. By imaging each channel interlaced throughout the night, those color backgrounds will all be similar. And as a bonus, rejection algorithms in stacking will better pick out that background light pollution and even remove them for you. There is one final benefit we're yet to mention. You see, when you shoot mono like we mentioned in the scenario one, you probably dither after every image, as you should. However, this means red gets every image dithered. So does green, and so does blue. And while that makes sense, well, if you shoot one shot color, your red, green, and blue are all captured in one dither, not separate. So let's further optimize our imaging time, taking this lesson over to mono, shooting a single image for each channel, and only then doing your dither. This reduces the time we're waiting for dithers by two thirds over the night, meaning we now only lose seven and a half minutes instead of 22 and a half as we did in scenario one. This may all sound too good to be true, and we all know there's no such thing as a free lunch. And yes, there is a catch, or actually two catches. The first is that you will lose some of that imaging time you regained by changing the filters. In my experience though, a modern electronic filter wheel is much faster than a dither, usually around one or two seconds instead of five to 10. The second is you need to have an accurate focuser and set up your filter offsets. When you change filters, you need to refocus because even parfocal filters aren't exactly parfocal. However, we don't want to do a full autofocus routine. That is way too time consuming to be doing every time. Instead, if you set up accurate filter offsets, then as your filter wheel changes between each image, your focuser will automatically adjust the focus at the same time based off those pre-calculated offsets. This way you only need to do your autofocus routine at the start of your sequence, and if your star sizes change beyond what you're satisfied with due to temperature or scene conditions, which can all easily be checked for in a program like Nina. 
Now let's go over how to set this up with an example in Nina's advanced sequencer. Here we have a really simple Nina sequence. We have a target, in this case NGC 1788, and within that we have a trigger for Meridian flip so that as we reach the Meridian, our telescope mount will automatically flip over for us. We then set the tracking, slew and center the image, and start our guiding. And this is as basic as you can get, but we'll get you up and running. Let's now talk about this new way of imaging where we treat it like a one-shot color camera. Within our light frame images here, let's just focus on the instructions for the moment. You can see here we have one, two, three smart exposures, each of them only set to take one image. And if we come across here to the filters, you can see I've set first one as red, the second one is green, and the third one is blue. The rest of these are all the same with time, type, binning, gain, etc. I've also set the dither for each of them to zero, and this is very important. Traditionally, what you would have is you would tell it to dither every single image, and you would maybe say, hey, let's do 100 red before we go on to our blues and greens, but not with this one. What we want to do here is set up all three of our images and then loop through them. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So what we've done is instead we've set up a dither after exposures trigger within Nina saying, hey, after you've taken three images, one for red, one for green, one for blue, then do one single dither. This means our dithering is identical to how we would be if we were doing a one-shot color camera. I've also thrown another trigger in here, which is autofocus in case our stars get bigger. I've set the sample size to 15 and the amount to 5%. This is completely optional. I've also added in here a loop for time span set for three hours. So we would get about one hour integration per channel. You could also set this up in many different ways though and say, hey, keep this loop going until you know, the object falls below 30 degrees or any other number of loop conditions you can see over on the right hand side here under the instructions. Now a setup like this will work great for RGB, LRGB, uh, even something like hydrogen and oxygen or hydrogen, oxygen and sulfur too. You simply need to change the filters that you have here instead of the red, green and blue. But what happens if you wanna do a different number of images for each of the filters? Say you wanna do LRGB, but you wanna take three luminance images for every red, green and blue images. Let's now take a look at how that more complex sequence would actually look in Nina. Same as before, we have our target set with the meridian flip, we set our tracking, slew and center, and start guiding. However, once we get down to our light frame loop, we're gonna see some slight differences. Our autofocus and loop for time spans are the same, but then we jump into our luminance filter. Here, it is set as IDAS for me because I use the IDAS D2 filter for my luminance. You can see I've told Nina to take three luminance images, and I've told it to dither after every single one of these. I then have my red, green, and blue filters down below. In this case, we take one green, one blue, and one red. You've seen here though that I've set it not to dither after any of these. I also don't have that dither trigger set for after all the three. And that's because it will take three luminance and dither after that last one. We will then take our red, green, and blue, go back to the luminance, and the red, green, and blue, and that luminance can all be on the same dither since they're separate channels. We will then dither three more times. And then the next time we come around to red, green, and blue, we will have dithered and be in a completely different spot. This way you are dithering as little as you need to while gaining that data across multiple channels in different ratios. This is just a basic example, but I hope it gets across the point of what you can do by treating mono like one shot color. If you want to download my full Nina sequence with annotations, head over to my Patreon, link in the description, where you can get all of that plus many other goodies. Now you're thinking in color with mono. This sequence style may not work for all setups or for all of you, but I do encourage you to try this out the next time you're out and with limited time or limited sky view. Let me know how you go in the comments down below and how it works out for you. I hope you found this video interesting or entertaining, and if so, please consider subscribing for more content like this. My name is Rowan, this is Astro with Roro, and clear skies.